Hello and welcome to Off The Shelf Reviews, it's Gaming Friday, I'm Gary and I'm Ian and today we are taking a look at Resident Evil, the remade HD remaster uh, which came out in 2015. Now in this come, video, I was going to say didn't it come out a few years before on the GameCube? Oh yeah it came out in 2002 on the GameCube right, and then yeah. had an HD remaster of the remake in 2015. Oh right okay. And of course <laughs> you know and so in this video we're going to talk about the variations of Resident Evil. I'm mainly going to talk about the original Resident Evil from 1996. Yeah yeah. Uh, but but this remake you know this 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 for me is is a staple of how you would remake a game. You know, this just proved that there is worth in looking at some of those very old games yeah. that have that have dated badly. I wouldn't say it's dated badly because Resident Evil One from 1996 is still a masterpiece. Yes, it's still a fantastic yes. game. This for me was just a you know th this this game shares your love for that original game with itself and with you as new players, and in a way, it also helps bring new players in into the Resident Evil yes. world. Yeah. Uh, so it was, of course, developed and published by Capcom, originally released on the PlayStation, although I think the director's cut, which came out in 1997, did make it to the Sega Saturn. Oh, and, and was released on the PlayStation as well. And, and of course, the PlayStation, yeah. And obviously, yeah. yeah, the HD remaster is available on Xbox and PlayStation digitally after the whole exclusivity thing with Nintendo kind of ran its course and Capcom started releasing their games on as many platforms as possible. Yep, yep. Now, the production for the original Resident Evil began in 1993, and the game took three years to develop. The inspiration for Resident Evil was an earlier Capcom horror survival game called Sweet Home, yeah, which I'll came out that. in 1989. Yeah, it's classic. Shinji Mikima was initially commissioned to make a game set in a haunted mansion like Sweet Home. Uh, which Resident Evil was originally intended to be an actual remake of before it became its own entity. Yeah. Uh, the the project was proposed by Sweet Home creator uh, Takuro Fujiwara, right. okay. who was, who was uh, Mikami's mentor and served as the game's producer. So Resident Evil was based on Sweet Home's gameplay system, adopting many elements from the game including the limited item inventory management yeah the mansion setting puzzles emphasis on the survival door loading screens the yep. use of scattered notes and diary entries as storytelling mechanics multiple endings depending on which characters or how many characters survived yeah backtracking to previous locations in order to solve puzzles once you've gained the extra items the use of death animations, individual character items such as lockpicks and lighters. Yeah. You know, restoring health through items scattered around the mansion. The intricate layout of the mansion and the horrific imagery. You know, uh, Fujiwara said that the basic premise was that I'd be able to do things that I wasn't able to include in Sweet Home, mainly on the graphics front. Yeah. And that was. You know, uh, he was confident that horror games could become a genre into themselves, and he entrusted Mikami, who was initially reluctant because he hated being scared. <laughs> so it's like, why are you making a horror game if you hate being scared? But <laughs> because he knew what scared him, that did help translate into the game. Yes. Yeah. And uh, and they were, um, uh, yeah. And so they hired him because he understood what was frightening. Now, during the first six months of development, Mikami worked on the game alone, one person. He created the concept sketches, designed the characters, he wrote over 40 pages of script, and uh, several of the Resident Evil Mansion's pre-rendered backdrops were inspired by the Overlook Hotel, ah. which is of course the hotel from the, the 1980 Shining. movie The Shining, of yeah. course. Uh, the game was initially conceived to be a fully 3D first person shooter, Wow. Uh, of course influenced by Sweet Home's first person battles. Yeah. Uh, a first-person prototype was produced for Resident Evil, initially featuring a supernatural psychological Japanese horror style, uh, before opting basically to go for the American Hollywood zombie style, influenced mainly by the George A. Romero films. Yeah, yeah. During production, Mikami discovered Alone in the Dark, which came out in 1992, which influenced him to adopt the cinematic fixed-view camera. Ah, yes. Instead yeah. of going first person. Mikami said that if it wasn't for Alone in the Dark, Resident Evil would have been first person instead. So we really have Alone in the Dark to thank for that. 
He was also was initially that? reluctant to adopt Chris. Alone in the Dark's no. fixed view camera system, Boy, saying it Jill. had an effect on immersion, making I'm the player right. feel a bit more detached. Yeah, but yeah, eventually adopted that. it because the use of pre-rendered backdrops allows for much higher levels of detail than his fully 3D person view. Yeah, which didn't get along so well with the original PlayStation specs either. So the first-person perspective was not used again for the mainline Resident Evil series until Resident Evil 7, well, where it's finally yeah. gone first-person. I mean, they went with it with Resident Evil Survivor on the PlayStation, but graphically that game wasn't great, and so it wasn't kind of accepted into the fold. But, right. you know, it's a first-person Resident Evil game where you're going around and you've got to... You, you, it's not on rails either, you know? You're, you're just like Resident Evil 7, you're not on rails. You're walking around using the joypad to move your character. Yeah. And then, obviously, using keys you that you find to unlock certain doors. You can't use them to unlock all doors. Right. And it's got multiple branches. Now, here's really one good. issue that I do have with this remaster is that we don't yeah. get... The hammy dialogue. We don't get blood. Yes, what is it? Blood. That's... I hope it's not Chris's blood. Yeah. You know, all of the dialogue was changed for this HD remaster, which, you know, the Japanese development team realized after the game was released that the vocalization wasn't up to scratch. Like, the script just didn't translate, or the voice actors just couldn't do it with the limitations that they had. Yeah. So they felt, you know, they saw the, the humor that came through and it's still parodied today yes. the dialogue from this game which for me is legendary first zombie attack the first zombie attack you know it's a faithful remake having these shots and those animated sequences redone and seeing more of the gore yes. that you just wouldn't see because the original Resident Evil with the gore that they did release you know nowadays you can watch the unrated opening for Resident Evil yes. the original where when the game was released people were like no we can't have this <laughs> you know, we've got to cut all that kind of stuff out. And I feel, I feel that's what made the game more it? hammy yeah. was between the live action actors, the 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 edited out it. gore sequences, you know, and then obviously the dialogue, which for the 90s was pretty on fucking par. <laughs> you know, nowadays you're kind of like, nah, it doesn't work. You, you needed emphasis on the violence, the horror, the blood, yeah. the guts, not what you get in the first fucking movie. But right. not going with that. <laughs> you know. Uh, so, you know, uh, while they were still developing Resident Evil 1, the 1996 game, uh, they had a prototype feature, which was cooperative gameplay. Wow. But they eventually removed it, as Mikami said, that technically wasn't good enough. But early footage of this co-op prototype was revealed in 1995. At the, the stage of development, a local co-op mode was present, along with varying and multiple outfits. Right, okay. Uh, a later demo that was made... For the 1995 V-Jump Festival presentation in Japan featured real-time weapon changes with the co-op mode removed and rudimentary character models and textures sort of being changed. Yeah. An early 1996 preview in uh, Maximum Console Magazine featured a graveyard and a slightly different version of the final boss. The graveyard, which was removed from the game, eventually made it into this version, the 2002 remake of the right. game. Right. Um... So, yeah, so there was a lot of things that they just couldn't fit in to the original release of the game, which yeah. with this HD remaster, they really got to explore it and add these extra locations. So you felt like you were getting more more of what you knew, but just yeah. unexplored territories, which get, which instantly brought back that horror, because you're like, wait a minute, I've not been here before. Yeah, yeah, that's what I found with this game. You know, you, you go into it thinking you know where everything is but everything's been moved around the puzzles have been made more elaborate the monsters yes. are a lot more dangerous and so it took that already survival horror aspect that you had and ramped up to 11 yes yeah now interestingly capcom didn't use any motion capture in the game despite literally having their own motion capture studio right okay. instead the animators referred to books and videos to study how people spiders and other animals encounter that the encounter in the game moved in real life yeah uh and of course you know i don't know how close they got to actual sharks but still it was <laughs> yeah. one of the most scary and frightening creatures in the resident evil games uh, is it really? I mean, the first time you ever come across a shark in Resident Evil 1, you ran away from it, ran straight for the room on the right, and then just drained the water and shot them on the floor. Actually, you don't even have to shoot them, you just let them die. Yeah, they just kind of flop around a lot. Yeah, obviously yeah. in the remake, there's this whole Jaws bow sequence with the shark coming out and trying yes, to attack you. Yeah, and, and, and it, it's stuff. horrific. You've got to drop the electrical 
um, battery thing into the water yeah. to fry it. Yeah. Uh, so the development team towards the end of the game's development had more than 80 staff members. According to uh, Akio Sake, head of Capcom's consumer software division, Capcom were hesitant to port Resident Evil to the Saturn because the hardware was not ideally suited to the game as the PlayStation, ensuring the port would take quite quite a long time. Right, okay. The uh, the live action full motion video sequences were filmed in Japan with a cast of American actors. Of course, they yeah. kind of dropped that for all later Resident Evil games, which yeah. you know, I, I'm a big fan of like the West Westwood Command and Conquer game, so I yes. love full motion yeah, videos that's what with I actors. Love as well, yeah. And that kind of played up into this whole the whole setup for the film and and of course at the time the appeal to us, you know, um, European and American audiences for, for Japanese games. Yeah, well, it's something that we'd seen a lot. I mean, Mortal Kombat had all the live-action characters. You know, Resident Evil had them. Command & Conquer had them all as well. And so, you... you you know, it, it enveloped movies and games together. You yeah. Were, you were part of this branching thing, and then they just take it all out, and they go, no, we're just going completely CGI, whatever. Yeah. You know, animated. And I'm like, eh. I, it works in this one though, you know. I I I I miss the live action characters, actors yeah. from the original, but you know, having them the way they look in this, at least they fit and feel the tone and everything else with the, this version of the game. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't that much of a fan of this version, uh, mainly because there was a lot of different elements that kind of bugged it for me. I mean, first off, it was only released on the GameCube. You know, I, it was in two thousand two. Yeah. yeah, it was very difficult for me to get hold of a GameCube back then. Yeah, because uh, not a lot of people would bought it. And then on top of that, when people did have a GameCube, and I'm like, can I play Resident Evil? No, let's play Super Smash Brothers instead. Let's yeah. play Mario Sunshine. I mean, I, I was yeah. so surprised that this version went to the Nintendo. I was just like, of all the consoles, it's like that's the family one. That's the one. Yeah. Where you play your Mario's and your your that, racers and your. And that, that's for me. That's what made uh, Nintendo stand out more because. Yeah. Before that, you had the 64 that had all these violent first-person bloody shooter games. And people yeah. were like, oh, you know, Nintendo just make Mario games. And I'm like, well, Resident Evil. Yeah, but it was also the big thing was that they, Resident Evil 4 was going exclusive to the GameCube. And that was, you know, I remember them releasing like a chainsaw, bloody chainsaw yeah. sort of special edition yeah, GameCube yeah, and yeah. things. And, 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 and that's it as well. It's like uh, Resident Evil Zero that would come out, I believe, after this one. Yeah. You know, that had more of an impact on me i think like i said at the same time with this one i'd spent many an hours playing the original resident evil that when i did sit down to play this one i needed i couldn't run through it no i had to spend hours finding out where they had put all the keys and and moved all the stuff yeah but but what got me as well was the fact that nothing else had really changed you know, we, we saw in the beginning sequence Chris, Jill, Barry and Wes go all running for the mansion. Yeah. You know half the Bravo team are dead. You know yeah. the rest of your teammates are, are disappeared. You kind of already know that Wesker is the bad guy. Yeah, yeah. You but it, it's still the, the fun of playing it. There's still the fun of accomplishing it. Yeah. So, you know, let's, just, let's talk about the story. You know, just in case anybody has, has forgotten the story or is not, not totally aware. Yeah. But the game takes place on July 24th, 1998 when a series of bizarre murders on the outskirts of the midwestern town of Raccoon City. Yeah. Uh, the police, the, the Raccoon City Police Department's STARS team are assigned to investigate. After contact with the Bravo team is lost, Alpha Team is sent in to investigate their disappearance. Alpha Team locates Bravo Team's crashed helicopter, land at the site where they are suddenly attacked by a pack of monstrous dogs. Yeah. Killing one of the uh, Alpha Team's members. Brad Vickers, the helicopter pilot, flies away in panic, and the remaining team, Chris Redfield, Jill Valentine, Albert Wesker, and Barry Burton, are forced to seek refuge in a nearby abandoned mansion. Yeah. Now, depending on which character you assume control of, either uh, Chris or Jill, uh, either Chris or Barry are separated from the rest of the team during the chase, and they don't make it to the mansion. Yeah. At this point... The team then decides to split up further to investigate. <laughs> and over it's like the, a really bad idea. Of course. But then over the course of the game, 
Uh, the player uh, that you choose will encounter different members of Bravo team, including Enrico, yeah. uh, the captain of Star's Bravo team, who reveals that one of Alpha team's members is a traitor before being shot and killed off screen by some unknown assailant. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you eventually learn that a series of illegal experiments were being undertaken by a research team under the authority and supervision of biomedical company Umbrella Corporation. And then the creatures and the monsters that are roaming around the mansion are the side effects or the you know the outcome of yeah. these experiments. Eventually, uh, you discover the secret underground laboratory that contains Umbrella's experiments in the lab. Uh, you encounter Wesker, who reveals that he's a double agent working for Umbrella and plans to use the Tyrant, a giant humanoid super soldier, to kill all the remaining Stars members. Yeah. However, in that confrontation, Wesker, supposed to be killed, kind of killed, maybe, yeah, doesn't really die. Heavily injured, but he's kind of injected him. And in this one, it showed that in the remake, it showed him injecting himself with the... With the virus. With, with the around. virus before yeah. the Tyrant kills him, where in the original original game you never saw that yeah and so you have the final confrontation with the tyrant and then you know the game has a few different endings depending on how quickly you did it whether you rescued the other stars member depending on who you're playing as yeah yeah they're kind of locked up the entire game yeah and then of course it'll either be with rebecca or barry depending on again the your the way that you played the game and whether you talked to them enough or yeah yeah and rescued them in certain situations yeah yeah so the other members of Star's team include Joseph Frost, uh, the sixth member of Alpha Team, whose death really sets the game into motion. Like I said, we've got Enrico, who only has one major scene where he kind of tells you... Yeah, he's got broken someone's leg, time. isn't he? Yeah. yeah. You've yeah. also got Richard Aiken, who I always remember as the guy who kind of poisoned. You have to go yes. running off to find the antidote yeah, for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That guy yeah. has taken ages to uh, die. You've got Kenneth J. Uh, Sullivan. He's the um, first guy to die the from first a guy, zombie yeah. attack. And then yeah. you've got Forrest uh, Speyer. Who's, who's the one you find on the balcony? On the balcony, yeah, yeah. yeah. And of course, I think you you get a different gun from him. I think you get a grenade launcher, or uh, yeah, he he's uh, for Jill. He's carrying the bazooka. That's right. Yeah. So you take that off him. Uh, for Chris, I think he's carrying the shotgun. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can't remember. So you know, production on this remake, he decided to produce the remake of the original game because he felt that the graphics had not aged well enough, making it hard for new players to appreciate its charm. Yeah. Capcom programmer Yashiro Anpo cited the game's original poor localization, like the voice work, and of course wanted to, to redo that. The remake was started, again, with a very small team, which soon grew with the aid of Nintendo staff, who literally came over and, and, and assisted yeah. uh, in getting this made. Originally, it was just planned to oh, just overhaul the graphics, but again, it soon expanded into voice actors, motion captured movements, new music, expanded environments of the mansion. And the game was developed over the course of a year and two months. And final development of the game was very intense as programmers literally said that we couldn't go home for two months straight, <laughs> not a single day off. We were oh, sleeping in the office oh. to make sure that this game came out on its deadline. And of course it was released in March 2002 in Japan, April in North America and September in Europe. And as I've said now, the game is available pretty much on, on every format. On every format, yeah. Um, so the the, uh, the reception to, to Resident Evil, you know, they didn't know whether this game was going to be a success or not. They expected to sell around 200,000 <clears throat> 200, copies. They right. sold thousands, millions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Totally by now. Yeah. And, and then th this is the thing. I mean, you when you're a kid, it, it you love horror movies you love being scared and this game just kind of took all that and ran with it you know definitely i didn't know many adults when i was younger who were playing resident evil it was all my friends definitely you yes. know we yeah. were we were playing doom but we were playing resident evil we were playing we weren't aiming just to play violent games. Well, it was it was the fact that this game also told a story. I mean, a lot yes. of games that I'd played at the time didn't really have too much of a complicated story. I mean, you had your RPGs. Yes, yeah. But a survival horror game that had these characters, I mean, as simplistic as it was with the script as it was, and, you know, I said it's not Silent Hill. Yeah. This is very easy to follow what's going on. Yeah. But you still found yourself invested in 
getting through to the next section, finding the next monsters or unraveling the clues and reading the file notes. Yeah. I'll and never forget reading Itchy Tasty. Itchy Tasty is a brilliant one. Yeah. You know, that, that's one of the ones that always sticks in your mind. And the fact the guy comes bursting out of the cupboard as well. Yeah. You're just like, shit, you know, that he's, he was in there the whole time. And and on to, on top of that, I mean, I know I, I I say in this one it didn't really change much of the the story of of Wesker or the, or the team, but the first time you played Resident Evil, you thought Wesker was going to be the hero. For the sure, I was him. glad when I refound him like somewhere near the plant monster, and it was like, oh, there's Wesker and he's shooting stuff. It's like great, there's another survivor who's yeah. capable. Yeah, he's he's going to help me. And then when you when you really get into it and you realise that he's a double agent, you're like, shit, this is a lot bigger than I thought it was. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's a hell of a lot of stuff going on. So yeah, so you know, Resident Evil it sold. I think the original game sold two point seven five million units. The director's cut, including the Dual Shock edition, sold yeah. about two point three million copies. Uh, in February nineteen ninety seven, it was the best selling PlayStation game up until that point. Wow. Uh, the GameCube remade uh, sold one point three five million units, and the HD remaster sold one point nine million copies worldwide across all the platforms. So all versions of this game have now sold 8.5 million units worldwide. Wow. That's a which is lot making this one of the most successful game franchises of all time. Yeah. You know, it was very well critically and commercially received and is often credited for defining the survival horror genre and has since been hailed as one of the greatest video games of all time. Yeah, I you know with that. It, its success has spawned multimedia franchise including the video game sequels comics novels toys and a film series yeah and a film series <laughs> what what bugs me more than the fucking film series is the fact that when i was a kid a uh, local shop of ours was selling the resident evil toys and yeah. i really fucking wanted them yeah you know i really i, I, I really wanted the wanted comics because i wanted to find out how they explained the events with chris and uh, and and jail to find out who was the yeah, actual protagonist who, who, of that story. They, they, they don't. They, they they make a joke out of it. Yeah. But I said to my mum, I was just like, I want to get those figures, and she was like, Well, when you when we get the money, I'll, I'll we'll buy them. And we never did. We were mm -hmm. we were fucking poor. <laughs> so so the the figures they all got sold out. They were bought up, and now they're really expensive to buy. Yes. You know, in the in the packaging, and I'm like, that's that's fucking. Those are collect those collectible For items. Sure, yes, there, you yeah. know, I fucking wanted those. That shit piss me off you know <laughs> so the, the you know the main reason why i wanted to, to highlight this game was because this you know resident evil one and director's cut i've completed them a couple of times but i never really mastered the original release right this version of resident evil i i kind of fell in love with it just immediately from the first time i played the h you know the the remake in 2002 to now getting the hd restored version of that remake yeah this for me is just whenever i think of resident evil now this is this is the game i think of because it, it was it was it, it's it like i said it's a love letter to the original and it's it's nearly perfect yeah you know they, 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 they made a couple of things easier by giving you these survival daggers yeah yeah so that combat. when you're grabbed you can immediately shank the zombie to get it off you so that you're not going to burn through Don't your you health get a taser as well with chris I think you get a taser yeah so you can fry them but then they, uh, they change the difficulty again so that when you kill zombies in this game, their bodies stay there. Yeah. Because after a while, when you come back to the mansion, oh, the, God, the yeah. zombies get back up and they have like red eye mode. The dead heads, they're dead called. Heads, yeah. They are they're called fury. Dead and they do more damage, they move faster, and they take more bullets. So that was... what you need to do is get the kerosene, and there's the, the one just on the floor there. Yeah, yeah. Fill it with gasoline, and then you need to make sure you've got the lighter so that you can set them on fire to finally remove them right yeah but i mean okay that i know that that kind of makes the game more difficult and and makes it a new feature for you which yeah. which which is really good but you know at the time i mean this was what 2002 yeah. um so we would be coming up to the release of um 28 days later which yeah. isn't a zombie movie it's, it's a bunch of guys with rabies um <laughs> and the remake Rage. and the remake dawn of the dead with yeah. running zombies now people kicked off such a big fucking fuss about zombies running now mm -hmm. i i i prefer the old shambling zombies yes well i mean this game originally resident evil was inspired by the george romero zombies yeah. but even though it is a virus yeah it's... when when you make when you make them run 
though. Yeah. You know, you are just kind of... Well, the thing is, there's other, cr- there's other creatures in this game that already move at a horrific speed, like the hunters, yeah, which can just jump and decapitate you in exactly. one hit. Exactly, you've got those insect things in the machine room at, yeah. uh, towards the end of the game. A lot of the thing, the zombies are supposed to just move slow, yes. I, I feel. Yeah. You know, just at giving them claws, red eyes, and let letting them run and open doors, is just, it just felt like somebody was just like, we need to make this harder. Yeah. You don't need to make Resident Evil any more harder. You've already moved half the fucking puzzle. Or you expanded <laughs> half the puzzles, moved half the stuff. But the you thing know, is, if took you, away if a you, lot of our If ammo. you were a fan of the game and you knew where the ammo locations were and the puzzle solutions were, you'd just be able to run around and do it really quickly. <laughs> Keeping it, changing it like they did with the director's cut and then changing it like they did in this one, it just... Mixing it up a little bit means you're not so sure then. Yeah, well, I already, like I said, I already did that with the director's cut. Yeah. You know, and then just re-changing it even more. I, and I understand you're you're trying to sell it to another, a, a, a new audience. A new audience and fans of the original as well. Yeah, it just, like I said, it just felt like, you know, Dead Heads was just a little bit too far. Yeah. You know, making zombies that run. It's just like, okay. And, and on top of that, you know, you've got, like I said, you've got to burn the bodies or they just keep coming well, back. It's the fact that you only obviously have limited kerosene, so you can only burn so many of the corpses. So you have to strategically plan which ones you are going to remove and then also know which ones that you can uh, successfully dodge and run past. Yeah. So that you don't yeah. have to burn through the ammo. Yeah. Uh, obviously, this game has, I think, three different difficulty levels where it doesn't just go easy, normal, hard. It's like... You know, how do you like your, your walk up a mountain? You know, do you just want a brisk walk or do you want to struggle and climb and, you know, and feel accomplished at the end of it? And so I, I like that it's kind of vagueness yeah, it's on its got, difficulty it's got level some anyway. Nice, nice changes. I mean, I, th- I think, like I said, one of the biggest grievances for me is I never, never went back to it. And yeah. every, time, every time I want to, every time I want to play the remake, I, I kind of just bug out and I'm just like, actually, I'll just play the original game. I, I played this remake again. And again, but the first the first time playing through the remake, I think it took me about fifteen hours right, to yeah. complete it. Yeah, and then I did another playthrough with Chris, and then I went back to Jill. I always play as Jill and Jill's, yeah, Jill's yeah. easy mode. Yeah, well, <laughs> even on the harder difficulty, it, it can be quite challenging. But I managed to d- complete this game in I think two hours and twenty minutes nice. on my last playthrough. Yeah. Um, you get which the was, <laughs> yeah, well, eventually, yeah, but this was a while before sitting and playing it now. This was a few years ago, yeah. Um, so right now I'm trying to remember which keys are where again and which rooms I need to go through in which order to get the right emblem, yeah, to yeah, go and do what I need to do. Um, but I played this game through, and every time you comp- you complete it, it sort of unlocks another difficulty level. Right, okay. Where there was, I think, the hardest playthrough I did of the game. Well, actually, I, I say it's the hardest. It would appear to be the hardest, but it was actually the easiest at the point that I was at. Okay. And that was play this game where every single enemy in the game is invisible. Everything. You don't see anything. Right, okay. But I had played the game to the point where I knew where the monsters spawned. Yeah, yeah. I knew their movement path. So yeah. I could go into a room with a shotgun and go, there's a hunter there, bang, kill it, bang, kill it. Go into the next room. And I'm just like, that's, that's how much I loved this version of Resident Evil, that I could play it where everything was invisible and I could still breeze through it in, yeah. in just uh, just around two hour mark. To all, and uh, one thing that I, I really loved was that when I got the final achievement in the game, so platinumed it, what have you, yeah. a handwritten letter comes up on the screen from the creator of the game right. who literally just said thank you to you, fan of this game, for playing this game to the point where you have done and completed the game with everything invisible everything done the game using you know killed the snake using only a knife (laughs) you know i killed that snake with a knife like it was like 90 times you've got to swipe at that thing (laughs) you know and uh, and so that letter coming up saying thank you a dedicated resident evil fan we love you because you love us you know it was just great i was just like wow like it's very rare a game comes up at the end and really did, From the heart, thanks you for your time. Was there an apology on the other side for handing the rights to Paul W. S. Anderson? Oh, I don't really think it was him. I mean, obviously, <laughs> after after this remake, he went straight on then to Resident Evil Four. Yeah, and I think that was his last real involvement, or as game producer, or executive creator, or yeah, yeah, what yeah. have you? So, yeah. you know, this game, 
you know, it is horror. It is survival horror, despite the fact that there are surplus amounts of guns and ammo. Yeah, well, you know? all of them aren't survival horror. Yes. Uh, but, but, I mean, and I mean the Resident Evil originals. I mean, yeah. Resident Evil, the original, the director's cut, the remake, HD remake, they... They are they they play on all your fears. Yeah, you know you you want to be scared. You want to be stood there like like you are now, being attacked by a guy, hoping you've got a knife what you do? to stab <laughs> him in the head, and then remember, oh crap, uh, uh, how much ammo have I got left? Yeah, you know, yeah. shit, I've got shit loads of shotgun ammo, but I still haven't got the shotgun. Right, right. You know, need to go become a Jill sandwich. That's it. You know, you've got to you've got to remember all the different rooms you're going into, and it's it's just. It's it's one of those games that I really can't wait for Dylan to get to a certain age. Yeah. And then I'm going to say to him, right, let's sit down and play Resident Evil. The original. 96 yeah. version. Well, well, Evil 1, I, you know, I might say to him, here's the 96 version. Oh, I don't like the graphics. Oh, really? Well, here's the HD remake. Yes. Now you're now what are you gonna fucking say? Uh, um, yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll. Where do I go? I don't fucking know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So right now, I mean, I I highly 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 hands down hands up in the air yes recommend resident evil in any of its forms the original the hd uh, remake the the director's cut any version you're gonna have a solid fun time with the game this is a benchmark a staple of the genre and you know it, and from the sales figures most people have already played it people will have the nostalgia for it and it's still great to revisit years later because I've taken, you know, years break from playing this game and playing it again now. It just feels great. I've got to get used to the controls again. Yes, yeah. You know, just kind of when you're moving in one direction and all of a sudden you start moving in another direction yep, because yep. the camera angles change. You get past all of that and then you just get into the feel, the vibe, the music, the atmosphere, the lighting, the sound effects, the creatures, the script, the story. It all just comes together. It's great. I, I absolutely love it. And Capcom, we know, are working on the Resident Evil 2 remake yes and i just hope i mean they, they're working on it from the ground up again and i absolutely can't wait if, if this game was an example of of what they're doing it's going to be what, the greatest treat ever when it finally does come out yeah in final thoughts i i definitely recommend any of the resident evils you know if 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 you if you're shallow you know and you you want good graphics then go with the remake yeah, you know, if you if you don't care about that kind of stuff and you just want to play a, a classic retro well, game, well, at least the remaster, this HD remaster, is more accessible now for audiences to yes. easily be yeah. able to pick it up. Yeah, um, you know, if you um, if if you're not concerned about graphics, you just want to play a really cool game. You cannot go wrong with Resident Evil. It's got everything. It's got a fucking broken shotgun. You know, it's. I didn't mean to pick that up then. <laughs> it's got it's got action. It's got twists. It's got turns. It's got scary moments. It is one of maybe the greatest game ever, ever constructed. I, and, and it's certainly set up a series yeah. of games which just get better and better. We all have our favorites. Mm -hmm. We all have our, our, our favorite moments. You know, we all have we all have those memories of God. Do you remember in Resident Evil Two when this happened, or Resident Evil Three, or Resident Evil Four, or Resident Evil Code Veronica, or Resident Evil Survivor, Resident Evil, Resident Evil Eight? Did you, it's yep. a benchmark in gaming history. Yeah. You know, and it should be celebrated, loved and cherished. It and, should, it should yeah. be celebrated and loved and cherished. And if you if you are still young and you've only got a copy of Resident Evil 7, yeah. go back, see where it all started. For sure. You know, Absolutely. It's not that easy. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's going to bring us to the end of this episode. I just want to say thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks for listening. We'll be back next Friday looking at another video game. I think it might be Resident Evil 2. I don't know. Really? Is it? <laughs> <Could be. laughs> of course, you can find us on Facebook, on Twitter, and on Patreon. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you next time.